Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Ryan from Movies with Ryan, and I am here with an unboxing. This, this was a mistake. Uh, so, throughout the Barnes & Noble Criterion 50% off sale, I said it was going to be good. I ended up buying more stuff than what I planned on. And I bought even more stuff. Um, I had quite a few things left on my list, um, some new recommendations, some other pickups I've been kind of putting off for a while and all that, and I decided to make a decent order. Now, PayPal has the pay in four. Um, I use it all the time, make big orders, you break it up in four payments, makes it easier. I did not have any going on right now, so went on to PayPal, and I got offered, and I think other people get offered as well, six or 12 month payments. I was like, okay, here's my chance to make a large criterion purchase broke down over 12 months. Smart? No, I'm not too smart with my money, apparently, especially when it comes to movies. Smart in the sense that I knocked out a big, huge, just, I actually knocked out my whole wish list, period. And bought some stuff. So, do I regret it? Yes, I do. Do I regret it? No, I don't. Now, I know. Contradictory. But, let's get in this package and see how much shame I can put on myself as I show you these titles. Stay tuned. All right, as you can see, folks, it is a big, big box. And I ordered this, I think, on Saturday, a Saturday. It was at my door on Wednesday. It should have been here Tuesday, but there was a mechanical delay. But I got it. So um, I know this is December now. Um, I'm recording this in November. Uh, Black Friday hasn't happened yet. So we got Black Friday video you'll see last week, and then this week's video, Criterion Unboxing. I put out a little bit more Criterion pickups than I thought I would. Either way, reporting for duty, Stabbing Steve. He's going to get in this box, this nice big box. Now I will say, I believe... I believe there is 19 titles in this box. Yes. There's some paper. As you see, as you can see on top, this filled to the brim. Here in about two months, I'm going to regret this as I'm paying off on this. Um, 19 titles, two DVD, um, 15 or 16 Blu ray, two, one or two 4K. People. Don't take financial advice from me or anybody else in the Bluetooth community. This is a disclaimer. Um, yes, I do have the money to pay for this. Obviously, I have a good job, blah, blah, blah. But um, this is insane. But again, fortunately, PayPal uh, spread this over 12 months. It's going to cost me like $30 a month. Not bad. Either way. We're going to get into this, and I'm not, I'm not going to go in any order. We're just going to go down one stack, come up the other stack, see what I got. Let me double check here, though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I am stupid. 19 titles. That's all I'm going to say. But, again, I knocked out my entire wish list. Um, I can start a new wish list for the next sale. 
and um, see what new titles come out. I think as of right now, we're on January, maybe February releases. I think it may just be January, but um, there's nothing coming out that is interesting me right now. So at least I got that going for me. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, let's start with the first thing. Um, this was a recommendation by Derek, the Convic convicted cinephile. It is a DVD. It's by number 165. And now that I bought this, this will get a re-release on the criteria, neither in 4K or Blu-ray, but it is Man Bites Dog. Um, as you can see by the cover, yes, that is a pacifier. Yes, that is blood. And that is a gun. Um, a documentary filmmaker, Andre and Remy, have found the ideal subject in Ben. He is a witty, sophisticated, intelligent, well-liked, and a serial killer. As Andre and Remy record Ben's routines, they become increasingly entwined in his vicious program, sacrificing both their objectivity and morality. So I can't wait to watch this. This seems like a trip. Um, again, Eric, want to watch it. Better be good. Next, um, somebody had recommended this video back in the July sale. It is a movie by Ang Lee, spine number 514, and that is Riding a Ride with the Devil. Um, this stars Jewel, Toby Maguire, Jonathan Reese Myers, uh, James Caviezel, and a few other people, but it's basically about. Um, an Orthodox Civil War epic. So it's, it's set during the Kansas-Missouri Border War. So that's cool. Um, it's Ang Lee. I love Ang Lee. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Probably one of the best movies ever. Ice Storm, fantastic movie. It's also in the Criterion Collection. This is a Western. And not really a Western. It's a, I mean, Civil War, but it's set in the West. Either way, Ride with the Devil. Ang Lee. Can't wait to watch it. Next is a movie um, during Plat X 2's John's uh, Criterion Month when he was doing the five. Both um, Stephanie from Movie Chatter and Dave from Cinema Dave recommended this movie. And I had looked at it before and I didn't really think anything about it. But they both sold me on it. And it's by number 906, a film by Ken Loach. And that is I, Daniel Blake. So this is basically about Daniel Blake. And he is in the um, system in the UK, and he's trying to get his benefits. He's at the age where he should be getting them, and he is just getting put down at every single point. Oh, go to the next window. Oh, no, you need to fill this out. Oh, no, you need to do this. You need to do this. And he's unable to get his benefits. And it's basically a study in the social economical issues that countries have in providing to their citizens. And I've heard nothing but good things about this. Like I said, Stephanie and Cinema Dave, two top recommenders. If you ever want to check them out, please do. But I, Daniel Blake, I cannot wait to watch this. Looks really, really good. Next, a newer movie that just came out. Um, it is a film by Sean Baker and Shin Ching So. It's by number 1149. Takeout. So I wanted to pick this up because I'd watched Chan is Missing and it was about Chinese American immigrants and really their life in Chinatown in California. And this is a similar vein. Um, the American dream has recently or rarely seemed so far away in Sean Baker and Shin Ching So's Raw Virete Takeout. An immersion in life and an undocumented Chinese immigrant struggling to get by in the Margins of post 9 11 New York. I can't wait to watch this. Um, of course, it's Asian. Um, it's a docu style movie. And it's about a subject I really don't know a whole lot about. Like I said, I watched Chan is Missing. Great movie. Same vein. So I can't wait to watch this. 4K upgrade. Uh, finally get rid of just my standard Blu ray of this. Um, I've been meaning to get this for a while, and I just never have. And I finally pulled the trigger. It is spine number 11, 
18, it looks like. The the paper's all wrapped up on it. Or it's 11.08. Or it's 11.05. I don't know. I can't read. I have contacts, but my contacts are for far away, so up close stuff I can't see. I need to be like Tony and get me a magnifying glass. I need to work on that. That'll be my Christmas present for my kids, a magnifying glass. Either way, Menace to Society. Great, great movie. If you've never seen this, watch it. And I've heard nothing but good things about this 4K upgrade, that it is just spectacular. I can't wait to rewatch this. Like I said, I had the Blu-ray. I got rid of it. The Blu-ray wasn't the greatest quality. I can only imagine this is fantastic. Next, another movie, uh, fairly new uh, to the collection, spine number 1113, uh, directed by Ann Hu, Hui. Um, it's called Boat People. And basically, this is about Vietnamese um, people after the Vietnam War and them trying to adjust to life. And I'm really interested in this movie. Uh, my father was in Vietnam. He served 68, 69. And other than the war, Vietnam's not something that's really ever been, really is talked about in the American system, in the American schooling system, I believe. And... I do know Vietnam is one place that Americans can go back to, and there's like no grudges held against them. Um, we were there for a reason, um, and it didn't work out. But I've never seen a Vietnamese movie before, and this really explores what their life was like afterwards. So I'm really interested in watching this. I can't wait to watch it. So, Boat People. Next, another recommendation. Um, I need to find out what the other movie is from this director because it's from the mom's point of view. So I think Stephanie from Movie Chatter probably again brought it up. But uh, this is a film by Kirsten Johnson, uh, spine number 1111, 1111. And that is Dick Johnson is Dead. So basically this is a movie she made about her father. Um, he has Alzheimer's. And she basically kills him in several different ways in this movie, apparently. And it's supposed to be just a really heartfelt family drama comedy thing. And I'm really interested in exploring it. I've heard really, really good things about this. And um, like I said, she has another movie out that basically deals with her mom that also, I think, had Alzheimer's. So I love these family movies. I, it's going to make me cry. And I love those type of movies. So Dick Johnson is dead. Seven. Twelve more to go. Um, a movie I know nothing about except for that I've heard that it's good. And it's got Jeff Daniels in it. And um, it's got Ray Liotta in it as well. And Melanie Griffin. Okay. A Jonathan Demi picture. It's by number 563. Something Wild. Um, 1986. So a straight-laced business, businessman meets a quirky, free-spirited woman at a downtown New York greasy spoon. Her offer of a ride back to his office results in a lunchtime motel rendezvous just in the beginning of a capricious interstate road trip that brings the two face-to-face -face with their hidden selves. So um, Jeff Daniels in a dramatic role. Can't wait to watch this. Something wild. Anybody know anything about this, let me know. It's been on my list for a while. Finally picked it up. Uh, I cannot say this um, director's name. I will mess it up royally. Uh, spine number 422. The Last Emperor. Um, how long is this? 165 minutes, 1987. Basically, this is following the last emperor of China, maybe? Yeah. The Qing Dynasty in China. Anyway, but this is basically the story of the last emperor of China. And I've heard this movie is fantastic. I've heard it's beautiful. I've never seen it. Piques my interest, of course, being Asian. And um, it's just something different. So the last emperor. Again, anybody seen this? Let me down down below. All right. Uh, yeah. Another new one. Um, 11.37. Frownland. Um, all I know is the Safety brothers have something to do with this. 
And this was this guy's rectorial debut. Debut. Um, what is his name? I don't remember what the guy's name is. Ronald Bronstein. Either way, um, I love the Safety Brothers. Um, I haven't heard anything about this. I figured I'd pick it up, check it out. What the heck? Next, I was going to go with the 4K, um, but I've heard there's, I couldn't remember who had the issues with the 4K, if it was Criterion or Kino Lorber. So I just wanted the standard Blu-ray. Now, I used to have this in the three-pack, the Hannibal Lecter three-pack uh, with Manhunter, this, and Red Dragon. I don't remember what the third one was. Or maybe it was just Hannibal. I don't, I don't remember. Either way. Spine number one. Oh, spine number 13. Holy crap. Silence of the Lambs. I love this cover on here too. I know there are some people that did not like this cover, but I like it. So I got rid of that collector's edition or that the three thing. I'm not a huge Hannibal Lecter fan at all, but I do like the Silence of the Lambs. And I figured what the heck, I'd pick up the Criterion copy. Another movie that is new. And I'm very interested in watching this. I've heard rave things from several people. It's by number 1157. It is a Czech New Wave movie from 1966. And that is Daisies. And it's basically you're following these two girls who... Czechoslovakia, probably. I mean, if it's Czech New Wave, I would assume. But um, basically, this is just a, a really radical aesthetic about two girls. So I can only imagine this is just a crazy movie. Um, I've never seen anything from the Czech New Wave, so this will be new for me. Daisies, again, let me know down in the comments. Good choice. Like I said, I've heard good things. Celeste de la Cabra and uh, James from 20 and 21st Movies both said this was good. I hope so. All right. Oh, I forgot. I have an arrow title in here, too. We'll put that at the bottom. Next is a movie, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not going to edit that out. Next is a movie I started hearing things about earlier this year. Um, I know Ken over mid-level media has talked about it. This had a BFI 4K come out. I'm sure there'll be a 4K of Criterion come out of this, but um, it's fine number 11. That is Ingmar Bergman, Bergman's The Seventh Seal. Um, I know it's basically about a warrior... Or a knight battling in the Crusades that meets death on the beach. And they play chess, I believe, or checkers or something. And apparently this is supposed to be like very moving and life-changing and introspective. So I can't wait to watch this. I've never seen an Ingmar uh, Bergman movie. In, in, Ingmar Bergman movie before. And I've heard this is like a good place to start. So I figured, what the heck? Seven Seal. Can't wait to watch it. Next, another recommendation from um, Celeste De La Cabra. We did a live stream together on Tim Talks Talkies about special effects. And they brought up this movie, spine number 260. I finally picked it up. Eyes Without a Face. Um, I've seen this many, many, many times in my store. Um, the last time I went in there, they did not have a copy of it. I was going to pick it up. But uh, the cover has always thrown me off because I thought this was like a military cover, like a military helmet and face and all that. And I wasn't sure what was going on with it. And um, no, it is not. Um, let's see. By Pierre Bazier uh, attempts a radical plastic surgery. Oh, no, no, no. A brilliant obsessive doctor. What I just said. Attempts a radical plastic surgery to restore the beauty of his daughter's disfigured face, basically. So the special effects I seen in this was awesome. So I can't wait to watch this whole movie. It looks beautiful. And it's um, French. So again, expanding my territories. It's not all Asian. But speaking of Asian, <laughs> um, Tampopo. Great movie. If you've never seen it, it's about the love of food and falling in love with a woman and just a great movie. Um, Juzo Itami. Directed that. Did a really good job about it. And this is his new title. It just came out recently. Spy number 1125. The Funeral. Um, 
It's death Japanese style and the rollicking and wistful first feature for Maverick writer director Juzo Itami in the wake of her lavacious father's sudden passing a successful actor and her husband leave Tokyo and return to their family house and oversees a traditional funeral. That's basically it. So this is his premiere movie. It's on the Criterion Collection. Can't wait to watch it. That that is so curl- colorful too. Kampopo was great. So I can only imagine this is even better. Another another new one that is highly regarded. Spy number 1154 by Casey Lemons. Eve's Bayou. Now this has Samuel L. Jackson in it. Um, so basically, the summer I killed my father, I was 10 years old. So begins Casey Lemon's spellbinding feature debut, an evocative journey into the maze of memory steeped in pregnant Southern Gothic atmosphere. So I can't wait to watch this. I've heard nothing but good things about this. I mean, everybody has been just praising this movie, so I can't wait to watch it. Three more, folks. Um, a movie I've slept on. Um, I've never watched it. The gentleman passed away, James Kahn. Everybody praised it. Now, I don't know if people are praising it after the fact that James Caan passed away or that this is just a really great movie, but I'm going to say it's the latter because I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this. Um, 691. Thief. Basically, James Caan is a thief, and uh, this is also directed by Michael Mann. I love Michael Mann movies. Um, This is his uh, actual debut feature. Let's see. A no-nonsense... No nonsense. Ex-con, safecracker planning to leave the criminal world behind after one final diamond heist, but he discovers that the escape is not as simple as he hoped. So I've heard this is just fantastic. I can't wait to watch this. Thief. Glad to have it in the collection. And finally, from Criterion, um, a DVD. This is one I was hoping would get a Blu-ray release at some point. Um, It never has. Now since I bought it, it probably will. But it is spine number 349. And that is Noah Baumbach's Kicking and Screaming. Um, I love Noah Baumbach. I think all of his stuff is great. This is just one that I've never picked up. And uh, paralyzed by post-graduation in New I, a group of college friends remain on campus patching together a community for themselves in order to deny the real world futures awaiting them. I can't wait to check it out. Kicking, screaming. I've heard good things about this. It's not talked about, I don't think, ever. Of course, when I say kicking and screaming, people usually go, oh, you want to watch that Will Ferrell soccer movie? No, this is what I'm talking about. No, Bombach. Love them. Can't wait. And finally, um, I didn't realize Arrow had put this edition out. There's um, maybe 88 films. I haven't been keeping up with 88 films lately just because um, other companies are now grabbing their IPs, their properties that they own and making them. And this is one of them. And um, I got this for 50% off too, because the arrow sale is still going on or was still going on um, at the time of the purchase. So it is Johnny Toe which he had a movie I watched recently, Throwdown, that entered the Criterion Collection, I thought was fantastic. It's I just laugh every time I think about it because it's basically about a dude that wants to throw down. But this is Andy Lau and Lau Ching Wong running out of time, one and two. So yet another Johnny Toe movie to add to the collection, and I've heard this is really, really good. So um, he also did PTU. I did not realize that. So I own PTU, but I've not watched it yet. Um, expert hostage negotiator is drawn into a psychological game of cat and mouse when a criminal mastermind with weeks weeks to live decides to take on the entire Hong Kong police force. So I can't wait to watch it. So running out of time, one and two. So that's it. That is my absurd, stupid haul. From Barnes and Noble. I, I hate myself. I really do. But I'm a movie collector. I love watching movies. And I did this to... I don't know why I did this. I really don't. But I did it. Um, 
I don't know if I'm going to do an elevator on this or not. 19 titles from Criterion. Uh, okay, folks. I won't buy anything at the next sale. July comes around. That's going to be a lie. I will. I will try to refrain, refrain. Right now, I'm saying it on video. I'm going to try to refrain from buying too much in the July sale. There we go. But I knocked out my list. I have nothing else on my wish list. Except for maybe the Coker Trilogy. Um, David over at um, Film Collector Archive. Talked that up during his five. I looked into it. I didn't realize it was by Kurosami, which also did Taste of Cherry, which I watched for the first time this year. Fantastic movie. So I can only imagine the Coker Trilogy is going to be just as good. So that's on my list, but it can wait. But here we go. Going up. All that Criterion goodness. With that one arrow video in, inside. So again, folks, down in the comments, let me know any of these titles pique your interest or anything. You know, I said, let me know down in the comments. Tell me about it. I hate myself. I shouldn't have done it. But spread the payment over 12 months. It's financial responsibility. Anyway, this has been, this has been a shameful Ryan. Coming at you from Movies with Ryan. Until I see you again, check out all my other videos. Black Friday last week, some Criterion stuff, all that good stuff. It's me. Have a fantastic night.